And we're live. Hey everybody, welcome into the at Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is Thursday, February 13th, and I have a haul video for you guys, or a haul to show you for the haul video. Um, today is the first time I've done a live haul show in about five months. So, <laughs> I am so super excited. I was super stoked to get to go sourcing last weekend. If you guys haven't um, seen the news or the video that went up last weekend, we had stopped sourcing for almost five months while we went through our death piles, our I don't want us and everything else around here and finally accomplished that goal so we can go sourcing again. Now, do I kind of sort of wish it had taken me just one month longer? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit like just maybe in March when it's kind of getting towards spring um, It's still really cold here. In fact, it was snowing last night. It's still cold snowing sleeting um, But we just don't have stuff around here. So we have to start sourcing again. I'm excited to go sourcing. I love sourcing I don't like going outside when it's below like 60 I'm just not a happy camper So I kind of wish it had just taken me a month longer, but I got through it um, considering how much we had, I got through it really fast. Um, a lot of it got re-donated that was just, why in the heck did we resource this? This was a mistake. Or this used to comp really high, but unfortunately it's gone to the bottom of the market, which tends to happen with some things. So that's like a lesson I learned. Get your stuff up right away. Because if you don't find it for like another year in your death pile, the value of it could have gone down. And... I don't know. That's just a lesson I learned. <laughs> don't let your death piles build up. Seriously, folks, do not let, do not source until it's going to take you five months to get through everything without sourcing. Um, anyway, we're done. We, ha we get to go out sourcing again, even though it's cold. And so we went Sunday. And um, this is the first haul video I've done in months. I don't feel like I even remember how to do these. <laughs> Uh, let's say hi to folks in the chat, and then we'll jump on in. P is here. Um, yeah, I'm glad sourcing has resumed as well, but I just, we couldn't just keep going the way we were going. We had too much stuff. Bill and David are here. Gnome and the Frog. Welcome in, guys. They're the ones with the blue wrench. Say hello to them. Uh, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Virginia. Pamela's Procurements is here. Hello, Recycled Ranch. And then my eyes stopped working. I was reading just fine and my eyes said no. Um, Lady Halfling. Finally catching a live show. Well, welcome in. I'm glad you caught this. Uh, John's here. Elizabeth. Linda. Thank you. I really had fun on the hippo hangout with um, the girls. I love Vicky and Katie. Um, Delilah just got done paying bills. That's always a bummer. Uh, Connie is here in Strawberry Lemonade. So... For those of you that are longtime viewers and can hark back to the time when I used to do haul videos every week, sometimes one or two a week, depending on how much we sourced, I do try to stagger these and go live at different times, sometimes at 11, noon, 1, 4. I try to just do like a different time every day to kind of try to accommodate all of our watchers' schedules and allow you guys to catch these live shows. Our regular Tuesday show will always be at 7 p.m., um, but these pop-up hauls will just always be at different times, and I do that for a specific reason, and that's to allow folks with different schedules to watch. You can always watch the replay, though. Um, tomorrow, I'll be back again live, probably around 4.30, I think is what time I'm going to do it. I have a 40-pound box of denim from Startup sitting here. So we'll look at that tomorrow, but today we're going to look at what we got from the Goodwill. Um, did I say hi to Strawberry Lemonade? Susie, scores galore. Um, running out of stuff to list is kind of an okay problem to have versus the opposite of just having tons of stuff and wasted money and wasted capital laying around your house. Um, Scott's here. Hi, Scott. All right, so we only went to one Goodwill and we were extra cherry picky. Yes, cherry picky is a word. I don't care who says it's not. Cherry picky is a word that Keith and I use all the time. 
So we were very, very cherry picky. Um, what we're trying to do moving forward since the huge task of getting rid of the death piles is to source only pretty much what we need to list for the week. Um, and also not to source just for the sake of sourcing. So I list about 20 items a day about six days a week. So I list about 120 items on my own. And then Keith is still working through the remotes. So he doesn't calculate in. If he calculated in, we would need 240 items a week, but he still got remotes. So we need like roughly 120 items a week to keep me going. Um, but we have decided we're gonna be extra cherry picky. And if we go in and we only find 50 or 60 that are good, that's just gonna have to be it. We're gonna have to go to a second Goodwill, a third Goodwill, a fourth Goodwill, or order a thread up box or do whatever it takes. Maybe I'll have to do some remotes. So instead of just sourcing tons and tons of bread and butter items to make our numbers, we're just going to be more picky moving forward. Um, and getting the inventory, that's the best. Not to say I didn't get any bread and butter, because bread and butter is what built our business, and bread and butter is what pays our bills. And bread and butter is 98% of what we find in our area. So, um, but I think we used to source just to source, like, oh my god, we need that so much stuff and we would just buy it all because it was a dollar um so yeah we have built our capital up and our savings account up a lot and not sourcing in those five months except for thread up boxes so um that was nice and then all the items that were laying around that were basically money that we spent and threw on the floor they're listed and some of them are selling already some of the stuff I dug out of the death piles sold, and you guys know that I was simultaneously going through our inventory at the same time, and I found a lot of items that had fallen off. So those were getting listed along with the death pile items, and they're moving. So good job, hippos. Um, we went to one store, I said that. 32 items. We spent a total of $59.61 and averaged $1.86 per item. And you can see there we only got 32 items, but because I just got a thread up box and I had the remainder of the death pile left, we just called it a day at 32 items between what I had, what I have here, it was fine. Um, in fact, I'm still going through the inventory because I didn't quite finish all of it. I'm trying to do a bin a day. I found so many things Sunday in two bins, between two bins, that weren't listed anymore that I created like two days worth of work. Just like getting the stuff back up. So we only got 32. We're going to go back out this weekend too. So guess what we're going to start with? Flash! Yay! Most of these plush are already listed. So I have them sorted in these bags of where the, their location is going to be once we're done here. And if you watched me on Domino's show last night, you may have seen some of these guys make a little bit of an appearance in his um, live show. But we're going to show them again. This is an official Ninja Turtles plush. He's like a chibi plush he's really cute he was 50 cents in fact i didn't spend more than 50 cents on any of the plush i got so can we just blanket and say all the plush i'm about to show you all of them were 50 cents a piece you guys have heard me talk about this brand before this is part of the hershey park in hershey pa i always grab the petting zoo plushies and this little guy's got a sweater on with some um, sport thing. <laughs> and he's got a little hoodie. And I did not put it on right. Look at the little ear poking out. Anyway, he's super cute. And we got a Pokemon. And Keith has told me who this is. There's like three, in, three or four in here that aren't listed yet. That I have photographed. Um, this is one of the ones I haven't listed. I'll have to ask Keith his name again or look him up. But anyway, he's one of the good Pokemons. I always tell you guys look for the Tomy, the Banpresto, or the Pokemon Center. 
That's a Tommy. I got... This one's listed, and I, I did look it up when I listed it. Um, she's from a Disney Junior, or Disney Finding Nemo. Geez, Star, get your crap together. It's Disney Pixar. Um, she's already listed, so I did look up her name and everything when I listed her, and it's gone out of my head now. But this is from Finding Nemo, a little pink octopus. A uh, tie. Paw Patrol. This one is Rocky. He's got cool glitter eyes and he is, he's a cute little dog. And then we have, oops, I'll save that, these two for last. I have a vintage official Rocky and Bullwinkle plush. This is one of the few. So the reason some are listed and some aren't, I did a whole big photo shoot with the plush on Monday. And then I listed them between Tuesday and Wednesday. Some of them needed baths. So the ones that had to go through the wash came back in Tuesday night and got photographed yesterday. So I haven't listed them yet. Oh, she's for last. Um, this did not have, see this is an example. I get asked this all the time. Do I ever buy plush that don't have a tush tag or a hang tag of any kind? Yes, if they're recognizable enough. Not generic, just a bear, just a dog, just a mouse. Um, I would never buy generic looking ones without anything. But when they're recognizable enough, I still do get them, especially for 50 cents. So clearly this is the Paw Patrol dude. And he's got a clip on his head, I guess, for backpacks. He's got a little zipper down here. There's, I don't know what you would put in there. There's room for like maybe a nickel. <laughs> And this is, is it Zoom Zoom? Do I say that right? Zoom Zoom? I actually call these the little pill bug plushies. The wee little ones. And this is obviously Minnie Mouse in a little Christmas costume. Megan Mawinney is in the house. Hey, Megan, do you guys, do you want to tell people yet or do you want to wait a little bit and tell them closer? Let me know. You can announce it while you're here. All right, we have a Warner Brothers Studio Fred from Scooby-Doo. He's even got his orange ascot. He's pretty dope. I said dope like it's the 90s. All right, and then we have some of these Mary Meyer plushes. Mary Meyer. Look how cute. Phil Farton. Look how cute his look. He's missing one side of his whiskers, and that's okay. Um, I do sell stuff sometimes with damage or a little bit wrong with them. I noticed the whiskers at the store and still decided to get him. And I just, he's listed. She's listed. Whatever. I'm not, uh, sure. But anyway, I listed the seal and I just disclosed that the one side of whiskers has been cut off. They're missing. And then I just knocked a couple bucks off. But look at the little face. Look at the little face. I used to love seals when I was a kid. And then we have another Mary Meyer. This one is a moose. From Vermont. So he is a Vermont moose. Alright, that's. Alright, we're gonna put the other ones on this side because the small ones go in bins and these guys go in bags. Um, I got three medium biggies, whatever. Got a Build a Bear. 50 cents always for Build a Bear. This one's sparkly. Can you see the. There you go, you can see it. The silver sparkles. Pretty awesome bear. There's the build a bear. Now this one had some red on its foot. It's still there kind of, so I'll just disclose it in the listing and knock a couple bucks off. But it was a lot worse than that. There was red all over. I really thought I was gonna be able to get more of it out. What I did was scrub it with awesome and then I soaked awesome on it and let it soak and he got a bath. But it still looks a lot better than it did. And then he's got 
that on his foot. The little seals are really cute. It has such a cute face. Hey, Courtney, welcome in. Hi. Um, this one is cute too. Look at his face. Some of these plushies, like they are just so stinking adorable. And when I take their little photos, I call it photo shoot. Um, when I take pictures of anything else, it's just taking pictures. Photo shoots with my friends because they're cute and you can pose them and you can make them look really super cute in the pictures. <laughs> He's got such a little face on him. Anyway, he is a petting zoo. I know he is. I don't know where I saw that. I am apparently going crazy in my old age. There it is. He's a petting zoo. So he's got a little pirate hat. He's got a little pocket in his shell. And when I comped him, we discovered that he was supposed to have a baby. There's supposed to be a mini turtle in there. So I just marked mine um, a little bit less than most. Um, actually, there were none just like him with the pirate hat. I should say that. There were a ton of sea turtles like this with the pocket with the baby in it. None of them had a pirate hat. So mine is still a little bit more unique than those that I found. Um, and I just disclosed in the listing that this, there's no baby. It's for this guy only. I had a photo shoot with my plush friends. So these were from Goodwill. I did say um, if you missed the top of the show, we went to one Goodwill this weekend. And we spent uh, $59.61 on 32 items for an average of $1.86 per item. All of the plush individually were only 50 cents a piece. I might keep her. She had to get a bath, so she's not listed yet, but um, I don't know. The real grumpy cat, she died. And it made me very sad because I was a huge fan of her since like 2012. I just loved her little face. And I don't know. I'll probably list her because somebody else loves her too and we'll buy her. Alright, so now I got some new tag stuff. These do not go through the washing machine. They come, they come in with the plush and they get steam cleaned to sanitize them. Because I don't want to ruin their... Um, tags. I have one thing here that's not new with tags, and I'll show it to you in a second and talk to you about why it didn't go through the wash. And I'm going to throw bags on the floor and just be awesomely professional. Amateur hour at the Hippo Hut. Alright, so this is just Old Navy. Oops, sorry. There you go. I have no depth perception. Um, oh, and I should say, before I start... Blue was the color of the week. So anything that was blue was only 99 cents. I paid up for some jeans though. We'll show you those at the end. So the this was new with tags. So I brought it in and steam cleaned it. Um, Old Navy is still a pretty good bread and butter brand. Old Navy definitely has a following folks that like it and wear it. And for 99 cents new with tags, we're not going to pass that up. I tried to fold them really nice after I steamed them so they didn't get wrinkled, as my grandmother would say. This is the Michael Kors. Again, not that awesome of a brand, but it was 99 cents because it was blue. And I have all the tags tucked inside because I didn't want to get them wet with the steamer. Um, new tags. Don't want them to rankle because I did steam them. And then, oh, Lucky Brand is still a decent, it's decent. Br Lucky Brand is nothing you should be paying up for or paying a lot for or rushing out the door to get. But it's still a decent brand. It does pretty well. When I find it as the color of the week for 99 cents and it's new with tags. I'll probably take this Marshalls tag off if, in case you guys are wondering. Um, whenever I get stuff with tags that has like Marshall, TJ Maxx, things like that, I'll typically take them off unless I don't have the original. Um, if this was missing, I might leave this on and just put the MSRP as what they're saying compare at. Um, but I, I typically take those off if I have this original one. And then I could say uh, MSRP 88, right? 
They're white. Not my favorite. I hate, hate, hate white clothes. Hate them. I cannot say hate enough times. White clothing stresses me out, frustrates me, but new with tags, lucky brand for 99 cents. Guess what? I like money more than I hate white clothes. <laughs> and then I brought this in to steam clean it because I had to do a little bit of work on it. So this is a Nike dry fit, men's size large windbreaker, full zip. No, it's not, it's a quarter zip. I'm a liar, quarter zip. And it has a team that I will have to look up because I'm a nerd and I only know comic books, horror movies, and true crime. I don't know anything about sports, nothing. That's okay. Anyway, this was 99 cents, the little tabby's blue. But it had just like a little bit of marks right here, like a little bit of scruffy. And I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to see if it needed like a treatment, like if I could get it off my hand, that's great. If it needed to soak, it could soak and then go through the wash. But I got it all off with um, my trusty five-year-old crusty ass Tide pen <laughs> and my awesome. And then I blotted it with paper towels and then I let it dry and then I steam cleaned it. So it's ready to go. Megan says, Old Navy definitely, they do. Old Navy has a strong following. And in fact, before I discovered Not Your Daughter's Jeans, I used to live in the Old Navy Rockstar Jeans. Um, people just love Old Navy. Megan says we're twinsies. We are. Our business models are even very similar and the stuff we source is very similar. I brought you up, in fact, when uh, Vicky and Katie were on the channel and said that. Um, this was 99 cents. This is something Keith picked out from the t-shirt aisle. Um, it's Madonna. It's like super tiny. It says it's a medium. I'm going to measure the bust on this. Or armpit to armpit like you guys are probably more familiar with. And compare it to the U.S. standard size chart I have. And I'll see if it's a medium women's or juniors. But I'm pretty sure that's a junior. So it looks pretty small. Anyway, super cool for 99 cents. I'm going to pull the jeans out and set them aside and show them to you guys last. Because other than plush, jeans are my favorite. So we'll start with my absolute favorite and we'll end with my second favorite. Um, again, we, we didn't get much as far as shirts. Very, very cherry picky. Since Keith is doing all the remotes and the shirts fall on me, and I do all the men's clothing as well now, um, he just got me good stuff to list. So this is blue. It was 99 cents. Columbia, men's size large, good size. It's a nice bright orange color with some nice plaid. This is a nice shirt, I think, listing for going into summer. Men like these types of shirts. And then, yeah, that Madonna shirt was definitely. Um, so what I find with sizing is your middle ground sizes are the ones that don't sell as well. The average sizes, the ones that are easy to find, the ones that everybody wears because it's average. Um, plus sizes do well and super small sizes do well. Like the size, the double zero and the zero jeans we do really well with um, because it's just the opposite end of the spectrum. Just like it's hard for plus size ladies to find clothing or um, I shouldn't just say ladies, like men's big and tall and all that. It's just as hard for smaller people to find clothing that fits them. Um, Keith's sister, I believe, is like a size, oh, she's just really tiny, three maybe. And uh, she buys most of her stuff online. She's an Old Navy fan. She could sell her jeans online because she can't find them. All right, got another Columbia. Can you see it? This one's plaid as well or striped, whatever. It's a nice looking shirt. These Columbia does well on Poshmark too. The Columbia's men's shirts. Um, the super duper bolos for Columbia. I know I've had them on this channel before and talked about it. The vented 
fishing shirts, the PFG vented fishing shirts. If you find those, those are bolos. We'll pay up to five or six bucks for those. Um, especially the really big sizes. It said Madonna on it. No, it doesn't. It says Lady Gaga. You're right. How did I read Madonna? Madonna. I swear to God, if you hold it up the other way, it says Madonna, but it's Lady Gaga, so. Thank you. I swear, that looked like Madonna to me. Not the face, just whatever. Like I said, my eyes are bad. I think I'm going blind. Or senile. This, guys, is a Bolo brand for you. Orvis. This is a brand we discovered on accident eons ago, years and years ago. Back in the day, no, but a long time ago, I found a pair of men's, they were very big size jean shorts, and they were 99 cents, and I'd never heard of Orvis. Brought them home, comped them, oh my god, OMG. So, we now source all things Orvis, and we pay up for them, we paid five for this. This is just, is a large Pima cotton quarter zip mock turtleneck it's purple the light in here is making it look weird but it is purple it'll look right under the photography lights everyone i know i swear it looked like a m-a-d-o i kind of was wondering when i was holding it up when it said born this way i'm like isn't that a lady gaga song oh well it's lady gaga Another Columbia. This one is, was also 99 cents. This one is a fleece. Little zip mock turtleneck. Um, it's really soft. Super soft. Alright. We may be getting down to where I'm not going to have any more shirts to show you. I should be more organized, but Keith brought these in from the washing and drying in a bag and that's where they stayed until I was ready to do my show. It's been a pretty busy week. Alright, so I got some cut from the cloth. 99 cents. They're a size 8. So this is one of those middle sizes, but just like every NOLO has an exception, most of the rules have exceptions. There are brands um, that I will only purchase if I find size 14 or larger or the very skinny ones. Um, but there's brands that I'll buy that I find in any size. Um, this is a very good example. These are cut from the cloth, size 8. They're also capris. So they're really cute. And I'm, I'm almost hoping, I can kind of feel, that they're going to be first class to ship. So I can charge what I would for cut from the cloth, like 25 30 bucks, But spend less to ship them. Orvis is pretty good. Um, I would say they're better than Columbia. Probably on par with North Face. I Kind of like with Columbia, we won't spend... We will pass Columbia up unless it's 99 cents, to be quite honest. Unless it's those vintage fishing shirts. Those we pay up for. We've only found a couple of North Faces in, in the wild, and it was never here in Pittsburgh, ever. It was in South Carolina and Florida. Um, and we paid like two or three bucks for them. But Orvis, we routinely pay up like five or six bucks for their products. Um, their products. Their products. No, I meant their clothing that I find at the thrift store. They're not products. Um, it's better to come home sourcing. Well, I actually hadn't even seen that shirt, to be honest. Um, Keith does all the shirts when, and the men's shirts and the t-shirts when we're sourcing and he puts them in the basket. I kind of glance at them as I'm putting them on the counter because um, I'm very organized when I put stuff on the counter for the ladies and they love me for it. I take all the hangers off. I put all the blue stuff together. All the non, or shouldn't say blue, but the collar of the day that's 99 cents I put in one pile and then I put all the rest and then she gets all the plush and anything we new with tags so we can have those in bags to come in to get steamed. Um, I kind of glance at it, but then once the stuff that's going to get washed and dried is in the trunk, that is where it stays until Keith goes and gets it and washes it and dries it, brings it in, and then it sits in a bag. So I hadn't even really seen it. I just thought it was Madonna. I'll pay attention to what he does. I trust him. He's a good sorcerer. 
But yeah, you're right. It is better to discover that this is Lady Gaga than a flaw. Look what I found. Look what I found. I paid $6.99 for Joe's. These are an example of the super tiny ones. These are the Vixen ankle and they're a waist of 27. And they're super tiny. And those will definitely be first class. I got some of my favorite bolo jeans for men. I paid $6.99. Buckle black. These are these are kind of an okay size. They're 29 by 32. But I don't ever pass up the buckle black or this other type of buckle for men. The ones with the names. There's Tyler. There's Cody. There's Derek, Dakota. Um, there's a ton of them. But they'll say BKE denim and then they'll have some kind of men's name here. These are ones I also pay up for. I start... The buckle black and the BKE Tyler or Cody, whatever it was I have, at about 50 on eBay. And I, I accept that offers of 40 to 45. And they typically move quick enough that I don't have to lower the price any. So I'll get the 40 or 45. And then I list them um, at like 62, 63 on Poshmark. And typically, typically get around 45 or 50. But they pay shipping in addition to that on Poshmark. Anyway, these are Tyler's. So I did pay $6.99 for these. It's this one is uh, 32 waist, which is good. Yeah, the Joe's tags that are brown are always good. Um, that was one exception to my rule of I don't really comp one at the store. I just, I, I typically know what I'm looking for. And um, typically even I don't have to comp jeans anymore. But I wanted to be sure that Joe's really small like that, that were going to be worth it. So I did look them up by the Vixen Ankle. And then I was like, yeah, they're worth it. They'll sell for like $35.40. So, boom, boom, boom. Better yet, maybe they'll go on Poshmark where they pay more money and they don't, they, they pay for shipping. All right, this pair was 99 cents. Just Lucky Brand, size zero, like I was just talking about with y'all. And I got a couple more pairs. So I got like three more pairs to show you of jeans and then I'm out because we didn't really get that much. So if you have questions, you guys, you can put them up in the chat. I'll take time to answer them before I leave you. Um, they don't have to be about this haul in particular. You guys can ask me anything. If there's something you've been meaning to ask me, but you haven't gotten around to it, go ahead and ask. I just dropped a pair of jeans. I'm a professional YouTuber. But yeah, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them up in the chat. I will answer you guys. I'm going to knock these down onto this chair. Um, Scrubs are hit or miss. You want to look for certain ones, certain brands, and certain prints. Um, my advice with them is if they're $2 or less, comp them and see. We, oh, we're closing in on 20, we were closing in on 2200. I'm going to look. Um, we were like at 2200 last Friday evening. We hit 2200 going into the weekend and then Keith listed really strongly over the weekend and kept it up. But then we started selling more. Yay! We're not complaining. Knock on wood. Sales, sales, sales are looking better. Um, and as you guys all know, when you start to sell more, it's harder to keep your numbers up, but, um, dun, dun, dun. Oh, we are over 20. No, some of those are options. I'm going to have to math in my calculator. It says we have 2287 active, but I know 125 of those are our stupid clearance options. So we're 2,162. So 38 more and we would hit 2200 again but I don't know if we're going to get that um because things are selling Shh, don't tell anyone and don't jinx it um but yeah 2162 as of right now was I think four sales today so far kind of poop day 
but last weekend was good, and most of this week has been really good. Yeah, we got four today, but one of those is like a $36 pair of True Religion jeans and some remotes, so. Yeah, it's not a problem many of us have seen since October 15th, but we won't talk about that. All right, I paid 99 cents for these. See the blue tag? And these are, if I find these for 99 cents, I always grab them. If there were 50 on a rack, I would grab all 50. And in fact, I would probably pay a little bit more for them. Um, here, the reason I have, let me explain that. The reason I have a rule about 99 cents is because um, we only source on Sundays on 99 cents day because Keith still works outside of the home as most of you know. As most of you also know, I'm disabled and I can't lift more than five pounds. Like physically I cannot, it hurts, but I've also been ordered that <laughs> by a doctor. Um, so I don't go sourcing alone through the week. I always take him with me so that he can lift all the bags and do all of the heavy work. Um, so we only go on the weekends. So they have a collar during the week that's half off at Goodwill. And when he quits his job and joins me full time, we'll go more often through the week on half off. And then that collar goes down to 99 cents on Sunday. So when we go to the Goodwill, our choices are to pay 99 cents for that collar or full price for everything else. There's no half off or anything. So when your choice is to pay 99 cents for something or $6.99, there's very few brands or types of jeans that I would pay $6.99 for. Now, when we can start going through the week and they're three fifty, there's more that I would pick up for three because there's some that I would be willing to pay three fifty for, but I actually have to wait till they're ninety nine cents. Does that make sense? Um, John, that would be a good question to ask the girls that list perfectly. You can go in their Facebook group and ask them. I haven't heard any. Um, I haven't heard any news. I know they were working on Facebook Marketplace. They might already be done with that. Um, bye David and Bill. All right, so anyway, these are these this is a good example. I would pay 350 for guest jeans any day. Especially I do really well with the ones like the Foxy Flare and they have a Daredevil boot that I do really well with. Um I feel like I should have two more pairs to show you and I could be crazy. Now they're there. Um, probably stop selling clothes, Virginia, and just do plush and electronics and buy more pallets and remotes and stuff. Of course, we wouldn't be as diversified, um, but if they got rid of the 99 cents day in our choice, we'd have to, probably have to go during the week, and we'd have to be, like, extra cherry picky. Like, of these 32 items that I showed you, I may have come home with four or five of these, so... Um, I don't think they will though because it's every Goodwill in the area does that. Um, I mean if they did, they did. We don't really have much options in our area so we'd still go and look and be cherry picky but it would be a lot less, there'd be less bread and butter clothing. Let's put it that way. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. I paid $6.99 for these. You can probably see why. True religion, really small size. I don't care. It's true religion. Do do. So I already did all the checks. If you don't know, you want to look for the Buddha on the pocket. You want to check the back pockets, make sure they look right. True religion does have some jeans without this flap, but typically they do have the flap with the point. They have um, the three tags inside. With the horseshoe yeah, I think that's common most people know that but do you know to check the rivets they'll say um they say stuff they say TR I can't read them TR anyway they basically have all their initials for jeans I can't read them I just know what they look like 
and I can read them when I'm in a Goodwill store with actual lighting overhead that I can see, but I can't see in here. Um, oh, check this too. And the button will say true religion. Oh, that sucks. But at least you still have 99 cents a couple of days of the month. I mean, imagine if they cut it out all together and you didn't have it at all anymore. I showed you the Tyler's, didn't I? That might have been all of them. I think I showed you all the jeans. Let me double check. Oh, no, I didn't. I did have one pair left. Dun, da, da, da. I didn't even remember doing this. <laughs> How exciting. Has anybody ever sourced stuff and started going through it and found something like that? Like, oh my God, I don't remember getting two of these. Or I don't remember getting this. Oh my God. So exciting. So ours always has the, the color of the week is half off and then it goes 99 cents. And then our local honey pot thrift used to have 99 cents Saturday, but they closed back in 2018. Um, most of the thrifts around here are very expensive. If we didn't have 99 cents day, I don't know what we would do. Um, and the one Goodwill with the 50 cent plush, because the other Goodwills will put their Disney plush at nine and 10 bucks. Jeans start at seven. So if they're not something like this, you're not going to be paying $7 for your bread and butter brands. Shirts, even t-shirts now start at like two fifty three bucks, whereas they used to be like a dollar, dollar fifty. Um, so we really rely on that a lot, but you have to adapt. So if it were to disappear, we would have to go during the week and get half off stuff and be more picky and um, get less stuff and less bread and butter stuff and probably visit more than one store. Um, but yeah, I guess apparently I got two pairs. I don't even know where the other one went now. It ran away. Two pairs of the Tylers that are 32. How exciting for me. I did not go to. Um, that's cool. So you can see that um, that average of $1.80 per item was mostly because of all the jeans I got that I paid full price for. Because um, everything else was 99 cents or 50 cents. And then, you know, $7, $7 pop for a lot of the jeans. But... Um, I don't like the bins. I try to not go to the bins. We actually haven't been in a couple of years. Um, nothing against them. It's how we got our start. And they are a very good way for people who are starting out or don't have a lot of capital to get a lot of stuff to list for very little, um, investment. But it's just, it's two things. One, my bad back does not allow me to bend over and dig for more than like a minute and it starts to just be too painful. I don't want to be jostled or fight with the wild rant. Blech. No, thank you. Um, I have a bad back. I don't want to be bending over and fighting people. And number two, it's just gross. And I, I mean, I dealt with it when we had to, when we first started and we had only 20 bucks and we needed inventory. That's where we went. Um, and we went there every week, week after week, after week, after week, after week for like a year. Um, as we were getting tons of inventory to build up our capital. Um, and I got to a point where I had one of those things and I would stand and poke. I like, so I didn't have to bend over. I would just poke through shit, pull it towards me. Sorry, I just saw her. Um, and grab it and go through it. But once we had enough capital that we could start investing in like whole entire pallets of remotes and we could buy off the rack and do stuff like that, I just didn't want to go back. So, but there's nothing wrong. If you are physically capable of standing there and digging through those bends, they're a very, very viable way of getting a ton of inventory for very little investment. I absolutely recommend the bends to newbies and beginners. Absolutely. Um, my personal issues are mainly because of physical limitation and mental limitation. My OCD and anxiety just doesn't cope well in that place. Did I do it when we had to? Yes do we do whatever we have to and adapt all the time yes that's something everyone should do for their business you do what you have to do until you don't have to do it anymore and you can do stuff that you enjoy more um 
So clothes, we mark down every other month by 5%. Not very much. Our goodwill just raised our prices. Holy cow. I can't whistle, but I tried. Yeah, bins are all different. Um, and every one is different. Some people have no physical limitations and some people um, don't have mental disorders that don't allow for them to dig through that without freaking out. But, um, and the, the, that's it, just it too, because we have the 99 cent day, the jeans are too much money at the bins. Um, because they're paying, we're paying a dollar something per pound. Most jeans weigh over a pound. So they're more expensive. Megan's absolutely right. Um, they're just not, they're not for us, but I can't say that we didn't use them when we had to. Um, just like with anything in life, you have to do what you have to do until you don't have to do it anymore. So we did it until we had enough capital and could start shopping off the rack at thrift stores, hitting up more, um, in the summer, of course, yard sales and garage sales. We go to church sales and now we can buy pallets and wholesale lots. Um, we didn't just jump into this spending $1,600 on 3,000 remotes. That took years of building up capital. Um, so I'm, I don't want to discourage people from the bins because it's where we got our very humble start. And we went in there with 20 bucks and we bought 20 bucks worth of stuff. And we turned that 20 into 40 and we turned that 40 into 80 and we just kept doing it um, until we could buy bigger, better stuff. And then more stuff and bigger stuff and more stuff and you just build and build and build um, and save up your capital. So it's a very viable place to start and I by no means discourage people from going there. Um, especially if, like I said, if you don't have physical limitations and you can stand there all day and dig, it's a great place to go and spend very little money. They have, ours has like tons of books. If you could stand there and scan them all day, um, you could find some gems. We have found some gems in there for books. Um, the plush is really great. I know that Robert goes to the bins for all of his plush, or majority of it, um, by weight. That's really, it's a really good deal for plush by weight. And you can find a ton of plush there because most people overlook plush and think they're crap and they don't buy them. So they end up at the bins. Not junk from Thread Up. I've had pretty good luck with Thread Up. Knock on wood. We'll see what's in this box tomorrow. I may bite my tongue. Um, yeah, that's... Unfortunately, a lot of Goodwills are different. Um, I don't see the point of not putting anything on sale. Uh, I mean, just think about your own business. I'm going to let you guys go, but I'm going to leave you with this thought. Think about your own business. If you had something up for full price for six months, which is the average sell time of most clothing, if you don't know that, those of you that get impatient and think, oh my god, my stuff has been sitting. Most clothes take around three to six months to sell. That's just how it is. We've done a ton of research. We put out a clothing guide that had the average sell through rate on all the clothing, three to six months. So imagine you had a pair of we'll say BKE Tyler jeans that you list at 50 bucks. You've lowered the price maybe down to 45 or 40 over the six months and it's still listed. Now, do you lower it again to 30 or 35 and try to get that one last um, sale? Or do you just immediately drop them down to your, you know, discount clearance? Uh, do you, do you, bet, bet, bet? <laughs> I have an actual category and I know most people don't but think about if you would if you've had an item for a little while would you still try to put them on sale and get that amount of money or would you immediately drop the price very drastically and put it on 99 cent auction or in your clearance no you still try to get the most um, you give I we give stuff it's chance it's fair chance so we lower prices every other month by five percent and then when they get too low, they go $9.99 free ship if they're first class, not jeans. I'm not talking about jeans right now. Um, jeans, we drop down to like 9 bucks with an $8 flat fee. Boom. We try that for like a month. If they don't move there, then they go to the auctions. Um, but I don't, you're skipping a very vital, vital step if you're not trying to put them on sale first. Like full price, 
clearance. There's like a ton of steps in there where you could just be knocking it down a little bit with sales a little bit along the way before you resort to clearance. Um, the bins in Dallas were crazy. There's no bins in northern Georgia, Carolinas. Yep, you can try one up there. All right. So, you guys, if you aren't in our Facebook group, you should be. It's a wonderful little place. It's a wonderful little corner of the internet full of really amazing resellers. We have people that sell vintage, plush, clothing, electronics. Um, we have a pretty eclectic mix of sellers in there. We have 20-year 20, 20 veterans. We have people that started yesterday. All kinds of people in there, but everyone is so nice. My group is really nice. The people are great. So you should be in there. Flippin' Hippo's Reseller Pod. There's a link in the description box for you to use if you want to join. It is free to join. Um, you have to answer a couple questions because I, I definitely want people to pay attention and read the rules. But basically, just number one rule is don't be a turd. Be nice to people. You know? And um, like this. Give it a thumbs up, guys. It helps the channel. Um, it really does. It's like such a simple thing and people are like, what? But it really does. Thumbs up helps us so much in the algorithm and stuff. And it allows us to get more views, which allows us to keep doing what we do on YouTube. And, um, oh, if you guys have questions, concerns, comments, or anything you ever want to talk to me about, please tag me in the Facebook group. Um, first and foremost, that's the best place to get a hold of me. But number two, if you have something more private you want to say or you don't want to blast your business in the Facebook group, please don't message me on Facebook. I don't always get those messages. Flippinhipposhelp at gmail.com. Email me there and I will get back to you if you have something that you don't want blasted in the group that you want to just talk to me privately about. Um, so, hit the like, join the Facebook group. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. And um, Yvette has a very good question. When am I having Megan back on my channel? Is Megan still here? Megan! We'll see if she's still here. Let her comment. Um, Oh, and you guys can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos on all social media. Um, kind of waiting to see if Megan is still in the house. She was just commenting. Give her a minute. There's also a delay on when I see chat. I don't know if you guys know that. There's always this little delay. Okay, Megan is here, so I'm going to go ahead and tell them, Megan, if that's okay with you. Megan will be back on the channel this Tuesday, guys. This Tuesday. So me and her talked uh, a little bit over last weekend, and she has agreed to be a guest on the show yet again. I think she's my most reoccurring guest other than Casey, which is awesome because I love having Megan on. But she'll be on next Tuesday, the 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and we're going to talk about jeans, sourcing, pricing. I want you guys to bring all your best jeans questions for us. Um, I know a lot about jeans, a pretty good amount. They're my second favorite thing to flip. But Megan actually knows more than I do about jeans because they're what she does most of. In fact, um, Megan is to jeans what I am to plush. So um, it's all of my knowledge and wisdom times two. But then you add them together and it's a whole bunch. <laughs> so bring all your questions um, and Megan and I will talk jeans with you guys for an hour. Um, we'll have more on that coming over the weekend. I'll create a thumbnail and let everybody in the group know and give you guys the link. So, oh, Yvette, that's so sweet. Thank you. I just love having Megan on. She's super awesome. She has like the same mind as I do, the same mindset, the same business kind of. We have basically the same business set up. Um, that's not the right wording, but that's okay. <laughs> we have the same stuff. We have the same mindset. We think, we think alike when it comes to business. And, um, in fact, if I didn't like plush, if I didn't do plush, I would be another Megan Mawinney and I would only do jeans because jeans are awesome. So we will have absolute fun on that show. Uh, think about questions ahead of time. Anything you want to know, we'll be there to answer. And in the meantime, you can get a hold of me in the Facebook group or email me. And as always, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I absolutely appreciate you spending the last hour with me looking at my goodies 
laughing at my mistakes and seeing what I got that was good. And um, until next time, guys, go be productive. Go make some money. Have a wonderful day. Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. I'll be back with my thread up box. You guys are the best. Bye.